Uncomfortable questions. Seismology. The key to wisdom is this, constant and frequent questioning, for by doubting we are led to question, by questioning we arrive at the truth. Imagine that a human gives a task to artificial intelligence to estimate the value and significance of art paintings that have been painted by completely different artists over different years. It is necessary to estimate the value and significance of paintings that are well known and paintings that are little known. But, the person should not give to artificial intelligence own estimation of significance of pictures and their cost. Certainly, artificial intelligence should have knowledge of all the laws of nature known to man dash, exactly the laws of nature. To have knowledge about what colors nature uses, what proportions nature uses, and so on. Art is born of the observation and investigation of nature. And how do you think? How many paintings will pass the test of artificial intelligence for adequacy and objectivity of their value and significance for buyers of paintings? I am sure that artificial intelligence will evaluate a significant part of paintings in a completely different way than these paintings are evaluated by successful art dealers. That said, Everyone knows perfectly well that any item is worth as much as you agree to pay for it. Of course, art is also the ability to go beyond the usual. But I suppose that going beyond the usual in art is also preferable within the framework of the laws of nature. Otherwise, it is either the greatest arrogance or a desire to deceive an unsophisticated public in the hope of selling their art for more money. Mother Nature is always one step ahead when it comes to beauty. She's quite the artist. I think that going beyond the laws of nature in art is very reminiscent of the ideas of the sophists, the laws of human activity are fundamentally different from the laws of nature. Man is the measure of all things. The sophists also argued that concepts such as virtue, justice, and the like have value only because they can be used to acquire benefits for themselves. Therefore, man must learn to speak and think in such a way that he can successfully use other people to his advantage. Sophists' ideas are very handy. Today, experts in the arts will be advising experts in artificial intelligence. But art experts are quite happy with the current state of affairs. But what is allowed to art is absolutely not allowed to seismology. Earthquake is a very dangerous, for the living nature, natural disaster and knowledge about it is not a private conversation between specialists in the field of seismology. This, unfortunately, concerns a very large circle of people. In earthquakes people die, houses are destroyed and human destinies are ruined. I really hope that when seismologists start training artificial intelligence, they will simply provide artificial intelligence with all the statistical information related to earthquakes. Just statistical information, without their own theories, hypotheses and comments. Especially since these theories and hypotheses do not allow today to confidently predict earthquakes. I am sure that if artificial intelligence gets such pure information, it will turn out that there are simply no laws specifically designed for seismology. But, there are general laws of nature and they work the same way in any natural system. And then, very hopefully, artificial intelligence will be able to answer the question clearly and convincingly. Does nature even have the institution of precursors of events? That is, does nature provide for someone, who, or something, what, to receive any prognostic signals before dangerous events? Nature is pragmatic and optimal. Nature cannot send predictive signals to itself. For what purpose? For example, in medicine, signs and symptoms are the body's way of telling a person that things are not going well. That something has gone wrong. But what is not normal in nature? Technically, even very destructive natural events are quite normal events for nature. That is, catastrophic natural events are not catastrophic to nature itself. For example, even if planet Earth were to suddenly collapse, would it be a catastrophe for nature? I think not. I think it will be a normal ongoing natural process. In fact, catastrophic natural phenomena are catastrophic only for living nature. 
and then, often, only for some part of it. And, if there are prognostic signs before dangerous, for living nature, events, they are intended for living nature, i.e. for the interested party. And as the sole beneficiary of predicting dangerous events, wildlife may be the only system that is truly capable of predicting dangerous events. Therefore, it is within the living organism itself that the mechanisms of premonition should be sought. And perhaps it is more important to reveal what the human, animal, felt, rather than what the geophysical device noted and recorded. I guess nature had no intention of waiting until 100,000 years from now to come up with some sort of mass spectrometer to predict dangerous events. Apparently, from the very beginning, nature had already built into the living world the ability to anticipate danger for the sake of preserving the species. And, of course, the mechanism for anticipating dangerous events cannot be discovered by simply observing animal behavior, a new and unusual approach is needed. But, today, you will look ridiculous at any seismological conference if you say that it is wildlife that can provide the right answers to earthquake prediction. Because for real scientists, scientific formulas look much more impressive than the study of wildlife. And this is despite the fact that so far, no scientific formula has yet provided a reliable method of predicting earthquakes. And this despite the fact that already today, the ability of living nature to predict dangerous events can be explained quite well by the concept of collective intelligence. It should be said that sometimes the newsphere from a library with instant knowledge transfer turns into a set of bank cells, where each cell holds precious knowledge, but it is not available for general use. This is only when a person turns on the sophist in himself. Virtue, justice, and the like have value only because they can be used to acquire benefits for themselves. Therefore, man must learn to speak and think in such a way that he can successfully use other people to his advantage. Dot, but fortunately, nature is absolutely just. And the laws of nature are binding for everyone, without any exceptions.